Alrighty, yo, what is going on for your boy, Mr. DDG94, back with another reaction video. Today we're going to react to how Kevin Durant sold his basketball soul. The curse of KD. Oh boy, I think we know where this is going. Shouldn't have went to the Warriors, bro. Should have went to the Clippers, man. That's what I said he should have did. He should have went to the Clippers or the Miami Heat. Or he could have went to go play with James Harden in Houston when James Harden was still at the peak of his powers. I think that would have been the best option for him considering the fact that they would have got Chris Paul down the line. And then once they got Chris Paul, I think that would have helped them tremendously. But it is what it is, though. There it is. Redemption for Golden State. The Warriors are NBA champions again. You did it, Kevin Durant. You've become a champion with the Golden State Warriors. You stuck it to your rival LeBron James not once, but two years in a row. You've ended all of the memes calling you ringless on NBA Twitter. Well, I hope it was worth it. Because by joining the Warriors in 2016, Kevin Durant made a deal with the basketball devil and placed an irreversible curse on his career. July 4th, 2016 is a day that will live on in NBA lore forever. It was the day where Kevin Durant, a beloved superstar for the OKC Thunder, chose to sign with the Golden State Warriors in free agency. KD knew that by doing this, he'd be ruffling a few feathers and become quite disliked around many NBA circles. But to him, the reward of seemingly endless championships appeared worth it. And perhaps it was. Kevin Durant way outside. How are you viewing this move from Durant? Well, I'm viewing it as the weakest move I've ever seen from a superstar. If you ain't driving the bus, don't walk around talking about you a champion. He went to the team that beat him. That fans will always hold against him. What Durant didn't know, though, was that the moment the pen touched the paper in July 2016, a spell of unluckiness was cast upon him. Kevin Durant became cursed, and he sold his basketball soul for rings. But what happened on the court and in the psyche of Kevin Durant that prompted him to make such a controversial decision to begin with? Winning a championship in the NBA isn't easy. It doesn't just take a well-constructed roster and a competent hey, sacrifice. staff. It also takes proper execution and good fortune. Yep. In his nine-year OKC Thunder tenure, KD had a handful of shots at a championship that were derailed by either poor play or just plain bad luck. 2013 and 2015 were two seasons where the Thunder had high hopes, only for it to all come crashing down due to untimely injuries. 2012, 2014, and 2016, though, were else suffered less because of bad luck and more because the lights were too bright. In 2012, his Thunder met the big three Miami Heat in the finals. The Thunder, who were favored by many sports media outlets to win, were outplayed by the Heat, losing 4-1. Durant did well, averaging 30-6, but LeBron James' stellar two-way play was more dominant. OKC's lack of success here wasn't necessary. If James Harden never really fucking disappeared and Russell Westbrook didn't make bonehead plays, uh, this would have been a seven-game series, hands down. I this would have won seven games if James Harden didn't disappear and Russell Westbrook didn't start making boneheaded plays down down uh, with... Uh, uh, I'll never forget that fucking timeout. I'll never forget that timeout call where he fucking fouled Mario Chalmers immediately after... I, I, oh, my God, Russ. Russ is one of my favorite players, but, man, do you make some boneheaded plays at times. Terribly Durant's fault. His co-stars Russell Westbrook played okay, while James Harden played horribly. What really hurt for Durant wasn't just the finals L, but the fact that he had lost at the hands of LeBron James. A big factor that went into Durant's decision to join Golden State had to do with him constantly being number two. He was second in the draft behind Greg Oden. He was second in MVP voting three times. He came in second place in the 2012 season. He was always ranked second behind LeBron James in the best player in the league lists. He was tired of it and consistently made his frustrations known to the public. Damn. The solution in his mind to this issue was for him to win a ring and establish himself as number one. But once it became clear doing so in OKC was becoming a challenge, he desired a more sure path. In 2014, the Thunder lost in the conference finals to the eventual champion San Antonio Spurs. The Spurs were starving for a ring after losing in the finals the previous year. Ain't nobody was beating the Spurs that year. I don't care what anybody say. The Spurs was out for revenge that year. I don't care what anybody say. Nobody was beating the San Antonio Spurs in 2014, bro. 
they was out for revenge after that Ray Allen shot. Fuck they hoes. <laughs> I'm telling you, bro, that Ray Allen shot and Tim Duncan missing that fucking hook shot. Oh my goodness, bro. Yeah, it was it it was bound to happen, bro. I I knew it from the way that they was playing all season. I knew it from the way the Spurs was playing all season. The Spurs, I had my eye on the Spurs every fucking time. I didn't care about the Pacers. I didn't care about the Heat. I didn't care about uh, any other team that was coming up in the East that year or any team that was coming up in the West that year. It didn't matter who you were. The Spurs was out for revenge. And when the Spurs are out for revenge and they're motivated... That's a scary fucking sight. Here. And the Thunder's most important defensive piece in Sergi. And if you don't believe me, go back and watch the 2014 NBA Finals and see how they whooped the Miami Heat ass in five games. Baca dealt with nagging injuries. In the closeout game six, San Antonio showed just how dialed in they were by scraping by in overtime to advance to the finals. In this OT period, Russell Westbrook shot one of seven, while Durant shot 0 of three. With a bit of bad luck in the Sergi Baca injury, and less than perfect play from KD and Russ, another opportunity had been missed by the Thunder. Once 2015 came and went with no postseason, pressure was mounting on all sides to get the job done in 2016. To add gasoline to the fire, KD was set to be a free agent following this critical 2016 season. Durant could have either stepped up to the challenge and achieved the inconceivable, or he could succumb to the high expectations. But instead of seizing the moment, he crumbled. And the most agonizing part is, he came so close to accomplishing something special and becoming number one. In the 2016 playoffs, Durant and the Thunder had to go through two historically great teams to win the Western Conference. One was the 67-win San Antonio Spurs, and the other was the 73-win Golden State Warriors. The Thunder shockingly beat the Spurs in the conference semis in six, with Durant taking control and evolving into the best player on the floor. San Antonio was 40-1 at home in the regular season but the Thunder managed to beat them twice on their turf in this series. It was a remarkably impressive achievement. Durant was in the process of writing a Dirk Nowinski-like playoff run, where he beat a handful of legendary squads on his way to the ultimate prize. Once his team faced the Warriors in the conference finals and jumped out to a 3-1 lead, the story of a heroic playoff run led by KD seemed to be becoming a reality. But we all know what happened next. The Warriors woke up from their slumber, yeah. won the next three games. Game six, Clay happened, man. Durant and Westbrook were humiliated, while Oklahoma City fans were left stunned. In the last three games of this series, KD and Russ looked like me when I tried to hoop at my local YMCA. They stunk up the gym, shooting a combined 60 of 157, or 38% from the floor. It was a choke job, plain and simple. KD and his teammates had squandered a chance at history. Funnily enough though, even the staunchest of Durant haters tend to forget about how poorly he played to end this series. This is because just a few weeks later, <laughs> all the attention went away from him. Yep, because the Warriors beat him. blew a fucking 3-1 lead. The Warriors shockingly overcame a 3-1 deficit. Which I still feel is rigged. Only to ironically blow a 3-1 lead in the finals. Instead of Durant being clowned on, Steph Curry was now the target for ridicule. Yep. KD, who had now become obsessed with the idea of a championship, saw the Warriors stumbling as an opportunity. He sent a DM to the basketball devil, and the two soon made a deal. Durant would receive championships in exchange for a curse that would be placed on his career. It seemed like a fair exchange at the time, especially for someone like KD who was starving for success. The aforementioned curse? Ah, well, Durant figured some curse would be worth the incredible thrill of rings. He wouldn't have joined the Warriors if they had won the finals, but since they lost, all bets were off. Durant choosing to sign with the Warriors in 2016 was seen as problematic for a myriad of reasons. First, he would be joining a team that had just won 73 games in the 2015-16 season, the most in NBA history. Secondly, he'd be joining a squad with three All-Stars, one of which was the reigning two-time MVP who had just won the award unanimously. Third and most importantly, Durant would be teaming up with the group that had just beaten him in the conference finals. And not only did they beat him, they overcame a 3-1 deficit to do so, 
and came just one win shy of repeating as champions. Durant being on the roster tipped them from near best in the league talent to a god squad that looked straight out of NBA 2K. KD knew that his decision would be incredibly polarizing and tarnish his positive public image he had cultivated over the last near decade. Yep. But not even he was ready for the backlash that would come with joining Golden State. You went to the team who beat you. That's my problem. Rip it, rip it, trash, trash, trash. It's all, it's all trash. You're all trash. You're all trash. Ah, uh, the little scammer. Durant went from a popular esteemed figure in basketball to a villain, and it got to him immediately. Following the announcement that he had joined the Warriors and the hate that followed, Durant was quickly regretful. He called up his agent and asked him, why the f*** did you let me do this to my life? He was human, and like many humans, he had his insecurities. So much so to the point where he was caught tweeting from various burner accounts on Twitter in an attempt to defend his name anonymously. Damn. Damn. Of course, KD soon calmed down and reminded himself of why he joined the team in the first place. Championships. Sweet, sweet championships. It was all he could think about. And boy oh boy, did he get them. In 2017 and 2018, the Warriors beat the Cavs twice in the finals, once in five, and the other in a sweep. Both wins came in mostly blowout fashion. Durant's Warriors signing reflected an obsession from KD on what many fans dubbed ring culture, which was the concept that a star player's career was meaningless if they couldn't capture a ring. Perhaps his breaking point was the blown 3-1 lead in the 2016 Conference Finals. He could taste a championship, but it was taken away from him in heartbreaking fashion. Following this, he needed a ring more than ever, and was willing to temporarily hurt his legacy to do so. That's right, in KD's mind, he felt that this move would only temporarily hurt his reputation. According to The Athletic in 2019, KD believed that he'd be viewed as better than LeBron James after the 2017 Finals. Apparently, him not being widely looked at as best in the world after his rings bothered him. KD soon realized that a ring wasn't all it was cracked up to be. He thought a championship would fill a certain That's how you get it. But to his surprise, it didn't. That's how you the get it. The grind for it makes it worth the while. Time. Following the 2018 Finals, which was a relatively effortless 4-0 sweep against the Cavs, the Warriors were back-to-back -back champions. KD was crowned Finals MVP for the second year in a row. So at the very least, if he wasn't going to be considered the best in the world, he could at least be considered better than Steph Curry, right? I wasn't even watching basketball around this time. <laughs> around the KD and Steph era, I was not watching basketball like that around this time. I was... I was just checking for Bucks games here and there, but I was not watching basketball like that around this time. This time was, so it was terrible to be an NBA fan. It, this was the peak of the Kevin Durant era in Golden State. The basketball devil had granted KD his wish of ultimate success, and now it was time for him to pay up for the two rings. The curse was officially in full effect, and it first reared its ugly head following this second ring. Golden State was favored by a wide margin to three-peat in 2019. But instead of more winning, the 2018-19 season for Golden State saw drama and anxiety pour out of every corner of the locker room. It was all spearheaded by the impending free agency of Durant in the summer of 2019. Y'all come here every day, ask me about free agency, ask my teammates, my coaches, you rile up the fans about it. Uh, let us play basketball. That's all I'm saying. And now when I want to talk to y'all, it's a problem with me. Come on, man. Grow up. Grow up. He now had the chance to leave the Warriors, so any negative event with them would be under an immense microscope. Immediately into the opening weeks of the new season, Kevin Durant and Draymond Green got into a war of words that would change KD's entire basketball mindset. After Draymond refused to pass the ball to Durant in the closing seconds of a tight game against the Clippers, KD yelled at him for the mistake. Draymond, who hates to hold himself accountable for anything, responded by unloading incredibly harsh words on his teammate. We don't need you, Draymond said. We won without you. Leave. Durant was stunned. How could his teammate, who he trusted, say something like that? It was at this moment that Durant realized he couldn't stay with the Warriors. He needed to show the world that he could win without them. This argument was one of the deciding moments that pushed KD out of Golden State. To make matters worse, this beef between these two was never formally addressed by the Warriors, being swept under the rug. Green was suspended for a game after refusing to apologize to KD, and the two never fully reconciled. Still, the Warriors as a team managed to put this incident behind them, 
Winning 57 games and advancing to the finals. They lost in 6 though, and the deciding factor for their L was Kevin Durant's absence. He first hurt his calf in Game 5 against the Rockets in Round 2, and returned in Game 5 of the finals a few weeks later. Upon coming back with his team down 3-1 to the Raptors, there were a few whispers of concern that KD had rushed back from injury to try and save his team. Durant's return could have led to an incredible comeback that stamped him as the undisputed most important piece on the team. He could have proven to people like Draymond Green that the Warriors did in fact need him. Rather than living out this fairy tale story though, the devil came knocking on his door. He had to pay up for his past deal. After one quarter of play, Durant tore his Achilles. It was a heartbreaking stroke of bad luck, and the worst injury of his career. Now, he had to sit back and watch as his Warriors lost in the finals. This Achilles tear would force him on the sidelines for all of the 2019-20 season. After the Raptors championship, the clock began ticking on free agency. For KD, in his mind, it was clear that he was done with Golden State. He came to this conclusion a long time ago. He knew it when the void wasn't filled after ring number one. He knew it upon his realization that fans didn't consider him the best in the world after he won his championships. He especially knew it when Draymond trash talked to him. He felt like an outsider as a warrior. He wanted meaningful, impactful rings that would give him the respect he felt he deserved. What better way to achieve that than by showing the world you could win outside of Golden State? He chose Brooklyn as his destination, teaming up with his good pal Kyrie Irving. What could go wrong? Well, while it seemed like a good move on paper to join the Nets, KD failed to realize that his deal with the Devil had yet to be fully paid off. Oh, you thought one emotional year with the Warriors and an unfortunate Achilles injury would pay off the bounty? Sorry, but no. The basketball gods required more. If there's one word I can use to summarize Kevin Durant's Brooklyn Nets tenure, it would be disastrous. After missing the entire 2019-20 season due to the Achilles injury, KD returned in December 2020. Soon after, Brooklyn acquired James Harden, forming a formidable big three of superstars. But not every super team was built the same. The Warriors God Squad had two things the Nets God Squad didn't, selflessness and good health. KD harshly learned of this truth. Things were smooth sailing for the Nets big three at first. They even won a playoff series together against the Celtics in round one of the 2021 postseason. Then, the curse struck once more. James Harden strained his hamstring just one possession into round two against the Bucks. Kyrie Irving horribly sprained his ankle in game four. In the matter of days, Durant's star-studded supporting cast had crumbled, leaving him all by himself. I hate how <clears throat> when people bring up this playoff series against the Bucks, I hate how y'all say, oh, if Kyrie and Kevin, uh, James Harden didn't get injured, y'all would have got handled in four. Should have, could have, would have, but it didn't happen, bitch. Now did it. Shut the fuck up. We champs, bitch. Shut up. Suck my dick. Instead of backing down, though, Durant faced this challenge head on. He played his heart out and battled with the Bucks all the way into the closing minutes of Game 7. We the champs, bitch. He hit appeared to be the game-winning shot over PJ Tucker. KD should have wore sm smaller shoe this size that day. KD's moment of redemption. But don't you remember that deal you made, Kevin? Look a little closer at that shot. It was a two-pointer, not a three. Durant's foot was just barely on the three-point line. Simply losing to the Bucks in Game 7 didn't fully satisfy the basketball. Should have wear a smaller shoe it size. It wanted to twist the knife even further by making Durant and the Nets fan base think they had won, only to find out later it was still tied. Soon after, the Nets lost in overtime, and their season was over. But the nightmare didn't end here. Immediately once the 2021-22 season started, it became apparent that the once feared Big 3 had some issues. James Harden was not nearly the MVP talent he was before due to a hamstring injury he suffered in the 2021 playoffs. While Kyrie Irving was threatening to sit out indefinitely due to his reluctance to take a vaccine. Durant went from being surrounded by- Which I didn't have a problem with because that's his decision. I don't get how people hold that against him. That's his body. That's his decision. I cannot believe people still holding that against that man because he made a decision to not play because he did not want to put 
a certain medicine that we still don't know anything about that did absolutely nothing because COVID is still running rampant out here. But any, but that's neither here nor there. We're not here to talk about it. We're not here to talk about it. Fuck COVID. Fuck COVID. Fuck the vaccines and fuck everybody else that thinks that the vaccines was going to work because they didn't do shit. I have disciplined, healthy supporting cast in Golden State to one that was frequently injured and just flat out unserious in Brooklyn. After opening up with high expectations, the Nets had a disaster 2021-22 campaign. Harden requested a trade midway into the season and was sent to Philly. The other star, Kyrie, missed 65% of the season because he refused to get the shot. It's hard to control what happens around you though. At least Durant himself had a relatively chaos for a year, right? Wrong. No. He got hit the hardest suffering a horrible MCL sprain, all because his teammate Bruce Brown accidentally fell on his knee in game. That this was a stay free happening accident, to him, though. and one that kept Durant out for nearly two months. That happened to him in Golden State momentum. twice. The Nets, who had a ridiculous amount of turmoil, could never gain chemistry. They barely scraped by in the regular season and earned the 7th seed, being swept in round 1 to the Celtics. In this series, Kyrie and KD were embarrassed on national television. Durant had one of the worst series in his career, shooting 38% from the field on 21 shot attempts a game. Now, the once rosy promising future of Brooklyn was falling apart. To top it off, KD had to watch as his former star teammate Steph Curry won the championship, acquiring his first ever finals MVP in the process. This was a huge gut punch to Durant. One of the few things he could take solace in from his Warriors days was that at the very least, he was the best player on that two-time championship team. But now the public opinion had shifted. Steph was considered the most integral piece to those title teams, not Durant. Prominent media figures like Charles Barkley began calling Katie. If so, then why did they blow a 3-1 lead? If so, why did they go get Kevin? Why did they all go try to recruit Kevin Durant when he was on vacation? Just, just, just a just a little thought. I don't agree with that thing that people say. Like, oh, he was the most important piece. Yeah, Steph is an important piece, but let's be real. You blew a three-one lead. You were 73 and 9 and blew a 3 1 lead. You went out and got this man to ensure that y'all win championships. And he did that for you. And when he was no longer available, y'all fucked up and lost. So there's still some validity to that. To that. There's still some validity to that claim. Because look at the Warriors now. Arrest my case. He out, claiming he was a bus rider, not a bus driver. All these bus riders, they don't mean nothing to me. If you ain't driving the bus, don't walk around and talk about you a champion. <laughs> if you riding the bus, I don't want to hear it. KD wasn't too happy about these comments, but what could he say? The argument was quite fair. Before KD arrived, the Warriors were champions in 2015 and won 73 games in 2016. While he was with the team, they won two rings, and after he left, they still won without him. It was a bad look for the Warriors to be so dominant in his absence, and it killed the narrative that he was the most important player on the team. Durant was no stranger to the Steph vs KD argument. In fact, he was caught liking a tweet in early 2021 that said Curry was trash, and that he was better than Steph in those championship runs. The criticism that came his way after the Warriors 2022 title bothered him. It's like all of the hard work he did with them was being erased in retrospect. Unfair? Maybe. But it was simply the price he had to pay for his curse. Things didn't get any better in Brooklyn following their exit to the Celtics. KD requested a trade, then rescinded it, remained with the team, played well, and got hurt once more. The injury was yet another unlucky MCL sprain in January 2023. This time, it was Jimmy Butler who accidentally fell on his knee. One time this happens, and it can be written off as an unlucky tragedy. But two years in a row of this was shocking levels of misfortune. The curse struck again, 
and this game against Miami would be the last time Durant played for the Nets. KD went from a player who was known throughout the league for his availability, to one who seemed like he was plagued by injuries every season. He was sent to Phoenix after requesting a trade in February 2023, marking the end of an era. Three and a half years in Brooklyn, incredible expectations, but nothing to show for it besides misery. Maybe you thought his payment would be finished here, but no, his misfortune wouldn't change when he became a son. The irreversible curse of unluckiness followed him through the East Coast and into the Southwest. He played a few games with Phoenix, then got hit with more bad luck. Right before his home debut was set to tip off, in warm-ups, Durant slipped and fell, rolling his left ankle in an injury that would sideline him for three and a half weeks. Any chances of him gaining chemistry with his new squad before the postseason were ruined, all because of a routine move in pregame warm-ups. When he did return, the 2023 playoffs didn't go as planned. The Suns were sapped with injuries to DeAndre Ayton and Chris Paul, but that's still common. managed to advance past round one against the Clippers, that's common and tied the following Paul. series at two with the Denver Nuggets. The hype was rising heading into games five and six against Denver, but Durant played on impressive ball. The Suns got destroyed by 16 and 25 in these two games to get eliminated, with Durant shooting just 18 of 43 combined. He didn't leave much of a mark on the series as a whole, and was overshadowed by Nikola Jokic. This 2023 playoff loss marked the fourth year in a row that KD failed to make it past the second round. Yo, my guy's trying to beat Joel Embiid out here. Since Durant left Golden State, his achievements have been few and far in between. He never put together a full 82-game campaign in which he was clearly the best player in the league. He has no first-team All-NBA appearances since 2018, and zero top-10 finishes in the MVP voting since 2019. He thought winning a ring would make him the undisputed top player in the league, but now, most are left wondering if he was ever better than Steph Curry. In Phoenix, he's become a part of yet another dominant trio with Bradley Beal and Devin Booker. But injuries sabotaged those three immediately. Beal has had a myriad of back issues, and Booker can't consistently stay on the floor. KD's past teammates rarely had such severe health issues. It was only once he made the deal with the basketball devil that his teammates started becoming so injury prone. It seems like since KD left the Warriors, no matter who he plays with and where he goes, success is unattainable. So why is this? It's because he is not a leader. The bus rider quip that Charles Barkley coined isn't just some funny sounding catchphrase. It's a valid point. For nine years, KD failed to lead the Thunder to any sort of major success, so he joined the Warriors. In the Bay, Steph Curry was the heart and soul of that franchise. He was the leader, and he was the most impactful player on the court. Durant was riding the bus, not leading it. Once he hopped off and tried to drive his own bus, things didn't work out too well. This was only solidified when Steph won another ring in 2022 without him. If you don't agree with this point, then the only other fair explanation for his recent failure is misfortune. To which, in that case, it's all part of the pact he signed on July 4th, 2016. Joining the Warriors came at a cost, and it wasn't just damage to his reputation. He got his shiny rings that he had been fawning over, all for the major price of a permanent curse from the basketball devil. Untimely injuries, drama surrounding his co-stars, a shoe half a size big, playoff woes, and more. The fact is, Kevin Durant sold his basketball soul for two controversial championships. A few days after signing with the Warriors, KD was quoted as saying that the move itself was him taking the hardest road. Maybe he said this because he knew the nightmarish deal he had agreed to. Perhaps it was worth it, but man, has he gone through a lot since 2018. And the scariest part is, who knows what misfortune lies for him next. Hey man, you know, so you sold to the devil, this is what you come up with, man. You gotta be, <clears throat> if you're not willing to put the work in, sometimes it's gonna come back to bite you, man. 
<laughs> Somebody once said, you know, hard work beats talent when talent fails to work hard. You want to know who said that? The person who this fucking video was about. <laughs> yes, Kevin Durant said that shit himself. Oh my goodness. Hard work beats talent when talent fails to work hard. Well, shit. You went with the talent and you see how it's worked out for you. Because your damn show ain't working hard for it. Damn, KD. Used to be my number one, man. KD used to be my number one, dog. KD been my number one since 2011, bro. Damn, it's hard to see you fall so fall so hard, man. It's hard to see my, my boy fall so hard, man. But it is what it is, though. Shout out to him, though, man. Hopefully, well, I doubt. I doubt he can break the curse, but shit. Hopefully just some good fortune at least. Not in the realm not in the realm of a championship, but just in the realm of being in good health and having a productive season and showing showing the basketball world that you still a threat out here. Man oh man. Anyways, let's just go about do it for this one. I will see you all in the next video. Till then. Peace out.